Greetings from Manila. I am Pia Tenedero. I am assistant professor in the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, Philippines. And I'm also honorary postgraduate associate in Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia. Today, I'm happy to share with you some of my reflections on academic publishing. This journey of academic publishing is relatively new for me. My first journal article was published in 2015. That was a big confidence booster for me as a new researcher. My mentor and co-author said, publishing can be very addicting. And she was right. I couldn't wait to publish more. Getting published for me validated my ability as a researcher. The next three years, I managed to publish five more research articles, mostly co-authored ones. Well, this early experience motivated me to do my PhD to get more serious training in research mentored by an expert in sociolinguistics. And I was blessed with no less than distinguished professor Ingrid Piller and Dr. Lloyd Leesing of Macquarie University. One of my first lessons was research blogging. That first year of PhD, I published my first article in Language on the Move with a lot of help from Ingrid. This entry now has over 4,000 views, and that just really blew my mind. Wow, this is such an efficient way to deliver scholarly ideas to a much broader audience. So I tried to blog more about my research and some sociolinguistic reflections. And now that I've completed my PhD, I hope to spread the message of my work as widely as possible before it gets stale. I've started doing that with a few lectures and workshops, but I'm also hoping for a monograph and a couple of journal articles. This year, I was also made an editorial associate for the Asian Journal of English Language Studies. This is an international peer-reviewed, open access, non-predatory journal created by the USD English Department. Anyone can download the published articles in the journal's website, and we don't charge the authors for this. Now, this new role has allowed me to begin to see the other side of the picture where we review submissions. As an early career researcher, I have learned three big lessons from my modest experience in scholarly publishing. First, patience. Writing a good paper is a serious time investment, and so is submitting it for possible publication. Earlier this year, I imagined, I hoped that I would have a monograph based on my thesis ready by the end of 2021. And then I learned that that was overly ambitious and it may actually take a good year or two years even um, for that to happen. And of course, with the pandemic effect on the review process, it could be very unpredictable. This worries me because I feel that the knowledge that I want to share already is locked up in that long process. What if I miss the golden moment when the information is still highly relevant and super fresh? But frankly, I think that my impatience with the publication process is also linked to the second lesson, priority. In our university, the promotion matrix considers the number of articles, the ranking of the journal, and the number of citations produced by a faculty member. These criteria are very quantitative, and they really push faculty to prioritize publishing in journals. Yesterday, Professor Yong Yan mentioned the unusually high volumes of article submissions in the past years. Maybe it's because of the pandemic, but I think maybe it's also because of the intensifying publication pressure. And of course, this affects quality. Sometimes in reading for my own research, I encounter published articles with very distracting grammatical inaccuracies. And I wonder, how does this kind of quality make the cut? The priority should be quality over quantity, right? In some rare cases, of course, quantity and quality can be achieved together. A particular colleague comes to mind. He is a relatively new PhD, but already he has managed to publish 15 articles in Q1 journals in just two years. His post about this enviable accomplishment said, achievement unlocked. That's an expression that originated in computer games, but is now used in the context of academic publishing. And it's quite fitting, I think, because it captures how publishing has become highly competitive and subject to gaming. Publishing is an insider's game, as John Adler said. 
I think this is why events like this academic publishing webinar organized by the next generation partnerships are really important because they give novice players like myself a better chance to somehow succeed. But I do worry about how this publishing pressure can potentially distract from the true purpose of academic publishing. Purpose. Why do I publish? When I focus too much on making the quota, I can easily lose sight of why. Am I publishing to advance my career, to get promotion points, to validate my researcher identity? Or am I doing this to get new knowledge out to those who need it most? At least I believe that's the true purpose of academic publishing. Preparing for this panel gave me the chance to get this purpose clear in my head again. It's a good guide for decisions about where to publish and how to promote my work. Maybe I'm being too idealistic, but I do want my research to have real impact, not just in terms of impact factors. Research and the documentary paywall argue that high impact journals have merit, but they do tend to make knowledge selectively accessible. The editor's talk yesterday discussed about the prohibitive cost of some open access options, which means publishing in Q1 journals does not guarantee that my study will be read or cited widely, let alone make a difference in society. So I am bothered by this obsession with the impact number and the privileging of journal publications. I keep thinking that it is partly to blame for making research more stressful than gainful for motivating predatory journals to take advantage of researchers who just want a quick chance at having their work published, even for a price. For disadvantaging smaller journals, because those who can write quality research, of course they want to target the key ones. And for discouraging new researchers, especially from the global south. The latest statistics from UNESCO show that in Germany, there are 5,000 plus researchers for every million people. In Australia, there are 4,500 plus for every million. In China, there are 1,300 plus for every million in the population. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, there are only about 100 researchers for every million. Why are there so few? Could it be because global research and academic publishing is that much discouraging and prohibitive for novices in the global south? Despite these challenges, I wish to end on a hopeful note. For someone just starting out, I think it's important to keep hope. And I hope that high impact journals will not have the monopoly of scholarly communication. I hope the notion of academic publishing will become more inclusive so that journal articles, monographs, as well as research blogs, research-based workshops, and lectures will all be given merit in the academic performance matrix. I hope to keep doing fantastic research and to learn creative ways to communicate my work so that the people who need them most will have access to them. And finally, I hope to hear your thoughts and ideas about these reflections. Thank you so much for listening. Salamat.